Hi, Tim here with Proclaim AV, and today we're going to take a look at a mixer. No, no, not that kind of mixer, an audio mixer, specifically an analog one. Let's check it out. So the mixer we're looking at today is the Behringer Zenix QX2442. And it's a mixer that I happen to have, and it has a lot of features that you're going to find on most analog mixers. Now, every analog mixer is kind of different in its own way, depending on the manufacturer, the era it was made in, and how it's set up. But I think you'll be able to catch the basics by watching this video, and I hope that it's helpful. Let's dive right in. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this signal flow of this board. Now, when I talk about signal flow, um, we want to see how signal comes into the board and it flows through the board and where it goes to different places. And so we're going to just walk through one channel strip. And by the way, when you look at a board like this, it looks kind of intimidating. Look at all these different knobs and buttons and whatever. But if you can figure out one channel strip and what that channel strip does, then that channel strip just multiplies over and over again. Here it is again, here it is again. And so you have a set of controls for every single input. For example, this microphone here that we're going to be walking through has its own set of controls all the way down to this fader. And they're in a row called a channel strip. Okay, So we're going to start at the top here. And um, just a quick warning, if you haven't watched my videos on cables and connectors, you might get a little confused about some of the terms we're using. Uh, so it might not hurt to go back and watch that if you haven't already. And that might help you out with this one. Okay, so at the very top here is an XLR input, um, which can be used for mic or line level. Right now we're using it for a mic level for the mic that I'm talking on right now. The next thing down is a line in and so that's meant to take a line level input which is a not a strong um which i'm sorry is a much stronger voltage uh than a mic level input and this particular uh unit will do a balanced or unbalanced it's printed right here balanced or unbalanced quarter inch connection in for the line in the third thing down is an insert it says insert io or input output and um inserts you'll find on some mixers, uh, definitely more often on analog mixers. And uh, what it does is it lets you insert something into the signal chain. So the mic comes in the top here, and then it comes down, it comes to the insert point. If you have something plugged in, then that signal goes out to the outboard piece of gear, does whatever that gear does, processing, effects, or whatever. And then it comes out of that gear and comes back in here on the insert point and continues on down uh, the signal chain. So um, that's what inserts are used for. Now with digital mixers, you don't see that real often, but with analog, inserts were used um, a lot more often. Next, we're gonna come down to the gain knob. And uh, the gain is also called trim on some mixers. And basically, it is the volume control for the incoming signal, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna look at something here real quick. Over here in my meters, we're gonna put, um, we'll talk about the mode here in a second, but we're going to put this in. So gain, when you set a gain up, you want it to kind of be hitting the zero uh, and coming into your mixer uh, pretty regularly there. So here you can see my mic is hitting zero just about uh, pretty consistently, clipping into two a little bit, okay? Now, if I turn my gain up more, um, then, I, then I'm getting up into sevens and tens. And then if I turn it up way too much, I'm getting into the clipping, which is bad. See the clipping here? And so the gain, you want your gain to be uh, very consistently, um, when the person or, or instrument is, is going on the microphone, you want it to be hitting zeros pretty consistently for that channel. And we'll go over how to set that up here. You're going to come down here um, to your solo button, and you're going to press your solo button. And what that does is it sends the uh, input for this channel off to the meters or uh, and off to the headphones, okay? Uh, well, we're mostly concerned about the meters. So uh, it looks like I need to pull that gain down just to hear more. There we go. <clears throat> uh, we're, we're doing a little better there, hitting the zeros. And so that is what um, you can use these meters for for solo. Uh, use the solo button to route that over to the meters and take a look at the incoming gain, okay? Now, if it's like just barely lighting up over here, 
um, you're not getting a very strong signal into your mixer. So you want to balance that signal using the gain or the trim uh, so that it comes into your mixer at a good level and then you can adjust it from there on out, okay? So that's the gain knob. Now right next to the gain knob is the low cut. So what is a low cut used for? Well, a low cut <clears throat> is often used to remove lows that the source you're miking doesn't need, okay? Um, there's a lot of times when you're miking a source that you just don't need that low frequency information. This kind of muddies things up and makes things sound uh, muffled. And so by adding the low cut in, there we go, the low cut in, it kind of cleans things up and makes things sound a little more clean. You don't get extra boom and, 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 and um, uh, extra low frequencies that you don't need. Now for me, I low cut almost everything gets a low cut, okay? Um, and the reason why is that uh, lots and lots of things contain pretty much no or no low frequency information or um, detrimental low frequency information to what you're trying to do, okay? The things that include low frequency information are going to be instruments that actually reach down into that frequency range. Those are things you don't want to low cut. Those are things that you want that to flow through. Also, recorded music is another thing. You don't want to low cut your recorded music because that's a full range signal and you want all that to flow through and not sound tinny or odd because you've chopped off all the low information. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in low cut is that manufacturers can't seem to agree what to call this. So there, I know of four different names. Uh, low cut, which means it cuts off the low frequencies. High pass, which means it lets the high frequencies pass and the low ones not pass. Okay. Um, bass roll off, which means it rolls off low frequencies. And uh, one of the companies calls it a rumble filter, <laughs> which I think is a way for them to try to describe what it does without actually um, telling you what it does. If people are walking around on your platform, and you may have heard this before, you'll get a lot of like bumping and rumbling and that kind of thing because walking will transmit all the way up the mic stand, the thumping of somebody walking will transmit up all, all the way up the mic stand and shake the microphone. And you'll get low frequency information that you don't need. Now this particular mixer has a compressor right here, a one knob compressor. And uh, it's not, it's beyond the purview of this video to get into what compressors do, okay? But I'll turn that one up there. And what that does is it automatically figures out when I've passed a certain threshold and pulls my volume down so that it doesn't get super loud. So now if I get really loud, it um, reduces the gain a certain amount so you're not overdriving your channel okay compressors are great for dynamic sources uh, one of the most dynamic sources you're going to run into if you're a church sound tech is going to be um, preachers uh, because they do everything from whisper to shout and running a compressor on the on your um, speakers channel is a really good idea if you've got it set up properly um, it can really uh, save you from uh, <laughs> blowing people away when that uh, speaker decides to let it rip. So uh, the compressor one knob you'll see on some of these newer analog mixers. Okay, so let's talk about EQ. And this whole section here is dedicated to EQ. And uh, on analog mixers like this, most often you're going to see a fixed frequency EQ, which means you can't adjust the frequency on it. So the high here is fixed, for example. And if we cut the highs, you can see that all the high frequencies go away. If we boost up the highs, then you can see we've added a bunch of highs. Here at 12 kilohertz is the frequency where highs get added on the on this EQ here. The low, the same thing. If we cut out, you'll see we've lost some low frequency information. Or if we boost it back up, we can add low frequency information. Now on this EQ, there's also what's called a sweepable mid. And so to demonstrate how that works, the, this knob here actually lets you pick the frequency of the mid EQ, which is really nice on an analog board like this to be able to pick what frequency you want to boost or cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost that frequency up, and then we're just going to sweep around. So it starts at 100, goes to 250, uh, comes on around here, 
uh, and it actually goes all the way up to three. So you can see that that's quite a wide range for this sweepable EQ, and so it lets you pick a frequency that um, is really helpful uh, for whatever you need to do with it, okay? So let's talk about EQ for a second. I have two rules for EQ. They are less is more and cut before you boost, okay? I've walked into locations where people have their EQs cranked like all the way up or all the way down. And for me, um, if you can let a signal flow through your board without having to touch it with EQ, that's good. You want that signal to be as um, untinkered with as possible. I know that's not really a word. But uh, you want the signal to flow through without having to mess with it if you can. Um, however, sometimes uh, maybe you have a particular microphone that needs a little tweaking or you have a feedback problem on a particular frequency, uh, then make some cuts, okay? Don't boost a bunch of stuff. Make some cuts. The problem with boosting is that you are turning up the volume on a particular frequency. And so really, you can create feedback if you go around and boost a bunch of things um, by just making a sharp spike in the volume on that particular frequency. You can actually create a, a feedback problem. So that's EQs. Now we're going to go on here uh, to the auxiliary section. Well, technically, we're going to skip it. We'll go. <laughs> we'll talk about it in a minute. But this is the auxiliary uh, mix section, and we'll talk about that in a second. Now well, we're going to talk about the pan, which is down here. And that's really basic. That's a left and that's a right. Okay, so uh, as you pan left and right, you can tell um, which uh, one is on or off. Now, most of the time, pan's going to be set straight up and down unless you're using it to assign subgroups, and we'll talk about that in a second as well. Now you have a mute button, and you'll notice that I have the mute buttons down on all these other channels, and you can tell that the mute button is on because there's a little yellow light here that indicates, hey, I'm muted. And so um, that's, a, that's a handy feature to see. You, know, you can just look right at the board and tell, oh, look, oh, channel one's not muted. Oh, dear. Uh, or I can tell which channels are unmuted. Even if my faders were up, you know, I'm like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, then the light comes on and lets you know what's going on. When you mute a channel, you mute it for all the mixes. You mute it for the main mix and you mute it for the auxiliary mix. It's just off for everything, okay? So if you've got everything set up and you're wondering, why am I not getting any sound? Check your mute button. It might be engaged. Let's take a look here. Um, we have a... a light below that called clip okay and the clip light lets you know that you're overdriving the channel we did that earlier so let's let's do it again here so if i'm putting too much signal into the channel first of all you can hear that it's clipping and second of all you can see that the clip light lights up when i am overdriving the channel oh that sounds pretty nasty there but that's important to see. If you if you have a source up and you're looking across your board and all of a sudden you're seeing clip lights starting to, to light up on something, and you need to go back and check your gain levels. Maybe something happened, a mic got moved, all of a sudden that source is hotter than it was when you set it up. Uh, so check your clip light and go, oh, okay, this is way too hot. Go back and listen to it. Oh, yeah, we need to pull that, that gain down a little bit uh, so we're not clipping. Now, this clip light also functions as a solo light. So I had that on before, and it just stays on solid when it's a solo light. Now, what does solo do? Well, we talked about it a little bit when we were setting up our gain, but solo routes our channel off to the meters, and it all. And you see when we hit it, the main solo light comes on over here. See that? Okay. Uh, and then it also routes it out to your headphones. So you can listen to just that channel and you don't have to listen to all the other channels. And that helps you, like, listen. If you think you have a problem with the channel, it's nice to be able to solo it and see what's going on with this channel. Oh, yeah, that's clipping. Or, oh, I can't hear anything on that channel at all. And so that helps you troubleshoot. It's a good feature to have here. The solo button. Now, um... This button has subgroup assignments, and so we're going to go into that. Now, if this kind of twists your head around, that's okay. Give it a, give it a, a second listen through or watch through it and see if it, it works for you. But some mixers have this and some don't, okay? This one does, all right? So 
here we have um, assignment buttons. Well, first of all, let's start with the main. Now, if I'm not assigned into the main, then if I unassign myself into main, then my signal goes away. Okay, so let's say that you have your channel up and your gain is up and your mute is off and you're going, why am I not in the main mix? Come down here to your assignment buttons and make sure that you're assigned into the main mix. Okay, now why do I need to be assigned into the main mix? Well, so that you go out the main fader. But why is there even a button that does that? Well, let's explain that by looking at the subgroup routing. Now this board has four subgroups, okay? One, two, three, and four. And there are faders for each subgroup, all right? So let's say I have uh, three microphones and I wanna assign them all into subgroup one. Okay, so we're gonna do this one. We're gonna assign this mic into subgroup one, this mic into subgroup one, and this mic into subgroup one. Now there's a problem because this button says one, two, but I don't want them in two. So what do I do? Well, the thing that I do is that I pan them all left. Left, left, left. Now I've got a problem because now I'm only coming out one side of your headset, okay? So what I need to do is unassign myself out of main and assign this subgroup fader one into the right and left. Okay, now I'm back in two, head, two sides of your headphones, okay? And now this is my volume control for this. Now since I'm unassigned out of main, I can go in here and like these other channels here are also assigned into that subgroup. So what have I done? Well, I, I, let's assign them out of main. So they're not in main, they're only in subgroup one because they're panned left and their one, two assignment button is down. Now you've taken all three of those sources and you put them on a single fader. So if all those sources are on a single fader, that lets you control them all together. And that's kind of a nice thing, especially if you have a very large board. You can assign them into a subgroup, and you could assign that subgroup into main, and now you have a, a volume control. So let's say you had like four choir mics, but you wanted to sort of float them all up and down at the same time without messing with this. There you go. Now here's something to remember. Your fader here is also a volume control for here. So just by assigning into the subgroup doesn't mean you can pull the faders down for those channels, okay? They need still need to be up where you had them and then you've routed them into this fader and made it the main fader for something, okay? Now let's unassign all that. So we're gonna take this back out again and put our mic back into main and pan it back to right left. Now you see that I have four different subgroups here so I can assign a bunch of different things into the subgroup. Now the cool thing is these can be assigned into main and they can be assigned into a subgroup at the same time. Now the negative about that on these analog boards is you can't assign just the subgroup one and pan left. If you were running a stereo output, you would run into some problems <laughs> unless you sign, assign that back in. But on some boards, there's a, there's a separate subgroup output. So you can use a subgroup as a maybe a group of um, channels that you wanted to go out to a particular mix, for example. Oh, these need to go out to hearing assistance, and they basically are gonna mi mirror exactly um, what's going out on the main mix, but I just wanted an extra volume control in here for it. You could do that. Or you can do what we're gonna talk about in a minute, all right? So now that we've talked about assignments for all these subgroups and how the assignment buttons work, let's talk about the main mix. So this is our main mix. All our faders here are working on the main mix, and that comes over here to the main mix fader, all right? That is one mix. That lets us adjust how much of everything we want to put into the main output or the main speakers, okay? However, we have auxiliary mixes up here. So you'll see that there's a whole row of red knobs, two rows of red knobs, two rows of orange knobs. And so these are auxiliary mixes. So I can go into an auxiliary mix and I can create an additional mix for let's say um, a stage monitor or a recording or something like that, I can create an additional mix that, and with whatever I wanna put it into it or whatever I wanna leave out of it and send that off to that mix's main output volume control, which is here. So now, not only do we have all this that goes to the main volume control, we can make four additional mixes with their own volume control that go somewhere else, okay? So we've just um, moved up from one mix to five total mixes on this board. And you're gonna have to keep track of those and manage them, they can get complicated.
Now let's talk about this pre-post fader button because there are different kinds of auxiliary mixes and you'll see this on all types of boards. You have a pre-fader mix, which means that basically this is its own mix and nothing I do down here on the faders changes what how this mix works, okay? But a post fader mix, if I had to take this out and make it a post fader mix, these volumes also affect <clears throat> the volumes of the post fader mix, okay? So if they're all the way down, even if I have levels set for this post fader mix, I'm not gonna get anything on it because my faders are down. So there are some advantages. Sometimes you want an auxiliary mix to kind of mirror the main mix. So when the faders are up for the house, you want them up for the auxiliary, and when faders are down on the house you uh, for the main mix, you want them down for the auxiliary mix. So that's the advantage of having a post-fader auxiliary mix. Okay? Now, remember before I said with the mute button that when you're muted, you're muted for everything. That means you're muted for the main mix, and you're muted from all the auxiliary mixes um, that are on this board. So if you want to kill a mic on everything, use your mute button. Now, up here we have the uh, auxiliary mixes here, okay? And uh, so let's mess with this. Let's put myself, I'm gonna put my, my mic into a an aux mix, and then uh, uh, aux one, and then we're gonna turn up the volume for aux one, and then we're gonna solo aux one. Ooh, man, I'm really loud in aux one. So the cool thing about having the solo button here on the output for aux one, as now I can look at the output of auxiliary one and, and see what's going on. It also means that I can listen um, on my headphones about what's going on in the auxiliary one output. Now, what's the advantage of that? Well, it lets me know that um, I'm not driving this mix too hard or whatever. It lets me monitor the output of the auxiliary mix, the solo button for auxiliary mixes. Well, there's a lot of other routing here. That we're not going to get into it. There are some stereo returns. That's and uh, that's important if you're using the mix for effects or that kind of thing. Um, now, I will note that on this board, uh, you'll notice that number three is an effects mix, and it says effects near everything. Effects here, effects here. And then it goes off to this effects processor, which is internal to the unit. And then you can route it back into the main mix on, on with the effects knob. And let's you put in reverb or echo or all kinds of different effects, okay? So this doesn't have to be an effects mix. And you'll look at a lot of these boards where there's an, uh, one of the auxes is dedicated to effects. But it doesn't have to be because on the back, you can actually plug monitors into the output of that before it ever goes to the effects processor, let, letting you bypass the effects processor if you need a fourth auxiliary mix. Uh, so that's very handy to have um, on a board like this, to have a, another auxiliary mix. Let's say, oh, I just need one more mix for faders, and really I'm not using the effects. Well, there you go. That gives you a fourth one, okay? Wow. That's a lot to go over, but I think we've really kind of hit all the highlights of how this analog mixer works. So I hope this is a helpful video, and I hope that as you watch through it, you've learned something. Now, it's one of those videos where it's kind of like drinking from a fire hose, but if you want to go through it again, go through it again. Watch it a couple of times, and you might pick up something different each time. I encourage you to watch this and watch it while you're in front of your board and try out some of these things and see, oh, that's how my board does it. Uh, every board is slightly different, so this won't be a catch-all for every board. This is just one analog mixer, but it works like a lot of other analog mixers. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hi, Tim from Proclaim AV here, and today we're taking a look at an analog audio something thingy. I'm gonna do a very specific um, thing. And stop. Uh, bye.